Hey guys, it's your girl Aisha aka Geek XX Chic, and I am back with another review of the latest episode of The Flash. We are on episode 12 of season 4, and it was very entertaining. I thoroughly enjoyed that episode. It was great. We didn't actually focus, believe it or not, uh, as much on the two people who were shrunken for this episode, but I think it was definitely a fun little side, um, side quest, I guess you could say, from the main episode theme which it's very interesting because I feel like this episode was definitely a mishmash of things and I feel like this might be a direct result of the fact that we don't have Barry in the focal point of everything anymore, right? Like typically Barry is kind of the center of it and his issues and his problems and whatever, you know, feat he's trying to accomplish is what is the center point in the end of the episode. But we've got Barry, you know, in the, he's not in the, foreground right now he's actually kind of playing a supporting role in his own show at the moment so it's kind of interesting because when things like this happen in a show they could solely focus on Barry in the jail and how he's dealing with being incarcerated in prison life but they're using this as an as a an opportunity to explore some of the side characters that don't typically get as much love and I'm not against that I'm actually not sad about it I mean if they've got to put Barry in jail right now then we might as well get a little bit more exposure into some of the other people in the team that we don't necessarily see outside of their function within Team Flash. So this week we got a little more, way more, I think the most we've ever actually ever seen of Joe and Cecile, truthfully. Um, I mean, we've seen bits and pieces since last season, but this is like, this is almost a Joe and Cecile episode as, as far as screen time and actual development. So that was something that was just never happened before. And I'm not ha I'm not mad at it. I think it's actually a really nice uh, change of pace to get a little bit of an insight into them. And of course, we like I said, we had the shrunken storyline as well, kind of going on to fill in some cracks. We had a little bit of Barry trying to get um, Big Sur released. And then finally, we had you know a little touch on... Um, what's going on with DeVoe and, and um, Harry's frustration over not figuring out what DeVoe's angle is yet. So it was pretty full as far as uh, storylines being juggled, but it still worked because like I said, without Barry there, there is a bit of a uh, storyline vacuum. These powers of Cecile's. Um, I'm not sure how to feel about these just yet. I mean, I'm not exactly against it per se. Powers are cool. But I don't know if I like the, like, I kind of, at a show like this, I kind of like that there are people with powers and there are people who don't have powers. And the reason I kind of like that distinction staying that way is because obviously people like Barry and Ralph and Cisco and Caitlin have a whole set of problems that come along with having superpowers and the responsibility that comes with them. But I like the idea that people who are supposed to be non-powered, aka the Joes and, well, before, Cecile and and um, Harry, all these people just kind of being humans, but still having to deal with, you know, the effects of having metas in their lives and, and how, you know, they just deal with things without having the luxury, sorry, and also Iris, without having the luxury of a, of a superpower to kind of help them out of certain situations. And so I'm always kind of iffy about whether or not I want people to become powered in a show like this. Like, for example, I personally wouldn't want to see Iris get powers, even though her being a superhero is a great, great concept, and I'm not against that, but I'm fine with Iris being human. I'm happy with her staying human, and I kind of want the humans who are human to stay that way, if that makes sense. But this whole thing with Cecile, I mean, the show seems to be, seems to be, um, letting us know that this is going to be a temporary thing that you know that it doesn't sound like they want Cecile to be forever a mind reader but the fact that she got that particular power when we've got um, pardon me DeVoe who also took on the powers of a mind reader I don't think is a coincidence I think somehow those things are going to um, become a thing because you think about it Cecile being a mind reader she'll actually be able to think potentially, potentially, be able to hear what DeVoe's thinking or his wife. And these are things like the biggest disadvantage Team Flash has right now is that they can't, they don't have the breadth and the depth of understanding DeVoe and knowing what he's up to to get one step ahead of him. Whereas DeVoe, of course, as we know, has been studying them for years. And of course, this massive brain capacity has been able to put, assimilate way more information than they could possibly do in a short amount of time. So 
Having a mind reader on Team Flash right now, even if it is temporary, could be very invaluable for them because if she can read Devoe's mind, assuming that those powers don't cancel each other out, or maybe, you know, that she can shield herself potentially from Devoe as well, that could be an, an advantage that, you know, a Devoe did not count on. Because even though he can think of a lot of scenarios, I don't think he could have figured out that Cecile would develop these powers. You know, there's only so much he can know. But anyway, that's kind of the good side of it. But on the bad side, I mean, I love that the show pointed out that <laughs> Cecile is clearly being really irresponsible at the moment. And while, yes, obviously Central City is very aware of the fact that there are metas, I love that scene with the mayor, FYI, when she was talking about, look at all the things we have to protect against metas, and then literally, like, it's all squashed in a second. <laughs> that was really funny. Uh, again, the show being very meta, which I'm going to come back to. Uh, but, you know, even though there's, this is something known in Central City, it's still not responsible for her to just go around showing people that she has these powers, particularly mind reading, right? That's very dangerous. And she was very intrusive. And I, I feel like, I feel like the way that they had Joe handle it was a little weird. I mean, I get it. Obviously, we see why uh, Joe would have issues with feeling vulnerable. But let's just be real. Everyone was finding Cecile extremely annoying by like mid episode because she wasn't respecting the fact that people have private thoughts like our thoughts are our thoughts for a reason like it's a little place a little happy place we all get to live and exist and do and say what we want without actually you know necessarily putting it out there and Cecile's just ripping away that privacy and not really caring now again she did say at the end that she can't control it all and I understand that but she wasn't even trying to curb it let's be real she was having a lot of fun with it and the fact that she just thought it was automatically okay for her to read Joe's thoughts just because they're partners I thought that was just a little bit, I don't know, for me it was off-putting. You know, I feel like she should have at least, you know, somewhere along the line figured out, maybe Joe doesn't want me in his head all the time. Maybe I should be trying to be more respectful or try to let him vocalize his thoughts instead of vocalizing them for him because they're his thoughts still, even if you can hear them. So anyway, we'll see how it goes. I feel like, again, these powers are for, I mean, the writers don't do anything by, on, you know, by accident. So I'm fairly certain that they, this is because it's going to somehow tie into the DeVoe storyline. But for now, I'm still not sure I feel about it. I am very happy at the idea that it might be temporary. I'm hoping the writers go with that and keep her, you know, have her go back to not being a meta when this is all said and done. Another thing I loved is the writers getting meta on us again. I love these new writers. I've said it before. I'm going to say it again. That moment when Iris said, how is it that all these, these these villains we come across sound like these names come out of a comic book? I'm like, yo, writers, here you go again. I love it. I love it. I personally love it because The Flash is already such a out there show where you, again, have to kind of think up here as it is. And I love it when they take moments to just, you know, that these writers are very much just always using these little moments to be like, we see you guys out there. We know that you know that we know this isn't real. <laughs> so we're just going to show you and then have these little moments where we're going to talk about the fact that this is a show about a comic book and that there's some things that just don't make sense. But I love it. I love it. And I love that it's not heavy handed. It's just little things here and there. And it shows that the writers are having a little bit of fun with us. And I appreciate that, writers. Please keep it going if you should ever stumble upon this video. Barry being in prison and continuing to help people. I really think that this is wonderful because seeing how Ma how Barry, you know, he's obviously restricted in how much help he can give right now. He can't get out of j he can't get out of jail right now. But the fact that he just can't stop that helping nature, I think, is such a wonderful thing. And I'm glad that the writers continue to show that personality trait about Barry because it is one of the things that's most lovable about him. But uh, it was just kind of sweet to see how he was just so. Like this Barry that was come out of the Speed Force in particular is more like season one Barry. And I do like that. The fact that his hope is inextinguishable. You know, he's still, even though he's in this crappy situation where Pudding is his only respite, which why is Pudding such a thing so far since prison? I don't know. Is there a joke I'm missing, guys? For those of you who might know why this Pudding keeps popping up, if it's a comic reference or just something to a movie I'm not getting, please let me know below. But digressing, uh, seeing that Barry is still finding joy in helping people and finding a way to do that is really just, I just think it's a great way for the writers to continue to show us who Barry really is as a person. 
and uh, that it's something that kind of gives him some catharsis in what's basically the worst situation ever. Which also brings us to Warden Wolf. Now, I said from the first time we saw that man, the camera lingered just a little too long, and he was just a little too interested in um, in uh, the first hacker me uh, meta that we got put in there. And now we know why. He is selling them. The Warden is selling these. It, I was wondering like why there wasn't like a meta ward in Iron Heights. And there is, clearly, there's a, looks like what almost looks like the pipeline where they keep uh, certain metas. And apparently they don't have metas in that jail because the Warden keeps selling them to Amunet, who is by, as we saw a, a few episodes back, is selling these mutants to for God knows what. So very interesting, uh, a little scary that she's going to know who the Flash is potentially going forward, but I am interested as to why, I just, I feel like there's more to it. I, I feel like, is it just that? Is it Gordon Wolf just a, a meta dealer or is there more to it? Um, again, I feel like how does this fit in with the whole DeVos situation? He had to know that sending Barry to prison with a meta dealer was going to be, like, what is his plan, is, I guess is my, oh! Oh my gosh, it just hit me as I said it. <laughs> Sorry. I forgot that Amunet sold Dominic, or what's his name? Da the guy whose body he took over. He sold, she sold him to DeVoe. So DeVoe already knows she's a dealer, and oh my gosh, that's his, this is how he plans on getting Barry's body, I think. I think this is how he plans on getting Barry's body. He's in jail, where presumably no one's going to miss him if he goes missing, or so they think, he gets Barry's body. Interesting. Maybe, maybe. I could be wrong. I could be wrong, but I feel like maybe this was DeVoe's way of making sure, because I mean, no, but he's captured the Flash before. He doesn't need to go through all this pomp and... I guess this is the way to get Barry's body without anyone ever missing Barry's body? But that won't work for Iris. Okay, now I've confused myself. But I feel like this is somewhere... This is definitely connected, because Amunet definitely sold the last meta to to DeVoe. So there's a connection there and now this warden thinks he's got Barry and I'm assuming, I'm thinking that DeVoe must have probably given some information to Warden Wolf to ensure that whatever prison that they created was one that Barry can't get out of. Because Barry can get out of most things, especially since the Speed Force. So very interesting. Now I'm, oh my gosh, questions. Other than that, like honestly, the episode was just great to me. I really, uh, I really enjoyed the comedy that we got in this episode. I really did. It was very funny. Um, I think that uh, Carlos and, uh, I, gosh, I keep forgetting the, the actor's name who plays Ralph did a fantastic job with their comedic aspects. Um, it was just really well done. And uh, it just, it was nice. It was just a nice kind of fun side story, high jinky type thing that we, you know, we can use to fill up these episodes. Now, with that being said, I am ready for Barry to be out of this. Like I do kind of miss seeing him and more of his stuff being kind of focused on. Um, but I still did enjoy the comic relief. Carlos is amazing. He's such an overlooked actor in this show. I hope that before, if we have to have Barry sequestered away a bit longer, I'm really hoping that we get to see something on Cisco because I feel like we really haven't had a Cisco-ish centric episode since the whole thing where his brother came and we found out that Cisco's family didn't approve of Cisco and his like, career choice or whatever. And I just feel like we, it'd be a great opportunity for us to see more of Carlos because he's an amazing actor and I think he's seriously underrated in this show. Um, and also just, just to get more of Cisco. Like who doesn't need more Cisco, right? So. Anyways, those are my thoughts on this episode. What did you guys think? Did you like the way this one all came together? I feel like this one had a way better pacing and an overall feel to it than last week's episode, but that could just be me. What did you guys think? And also, what do you think this grand plan is for having Barry be potentially sold to Amunet? Please leave your comments below. You know, I love seeing that and getting into the conversation with y'all. And if you like this video, guys, please go ahead and click that like button. If you wanna see more from this geeky face, Please click subscribe. Until next time, see ya.